Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome to this new devlog for Project WHU. In this episode, I thought we could talk a little bit about the design decisions we have made fairly early in our development. Uh, since we are creating a resource management game, we fairly early had to take a stance about how we wanted the game time to progress. Uh, one approach would be to do it in real time, like games such as StarCraft 2. Uh, real time, of course, meaning that time flows continuously uh, during active gameplay. Uh, in the example of StarCraft, uh, games usually start off at a calm pace uh, as the game progresses resources which are called minerals and gas in this case are gathered faster and combat units can be produced at faster rates uh, this naturally leads to more conflicts as the competing players armies grow and since the game is in real time this means that the number of actions a player can perform in a period of time will be an important factor on uh, how well a player can perform. In StarCraft this is referred to as APM, which means actions per minute. More actions per minute uh, does not directly translate in, into beating your opponent, but as the game progress and as you have more resources to spend and your territory grows, there are more areas that need your attention. So to keep up with all of these aspects that need your attention, it requires you to be able to have enough APM or some aspect of this will suffer. For example, to gather resources in StarCraft you produce workers, which is done through the main base buildings for each race. To have your economy keep growing you want to continuously keep producing workers. To be able to create more workers at once, you can expand to new places on the map by creating new main bases, so that you can produce from each of them. So every 20 seconds or so you need to go back and start a production of new workers for each base. And while also doing this, you need to keep building new buildings that can produce combat units for you. As your economy increases, you need more of these buildings to be able to spend your resources at a similar rate at which you're getting them. As if that was not enough, you also have to unlock new technologies to have access to more diverse and powerful units. So now you need to make sure that you do that as well when your economy allows it. Now, you might be thinking at this point, this sounds like a fair amount of things to keep track of already. But in addition to this, you also need to do other things. Uh, in addition to infrastructure obligations, you need to uh, keep attention on your standing armies. Make sure that they're fighting your opponent properly. Uh, keep them in proper locations to defend or attack. You may have to split up your armies to fight on multiple fronts. You may want to keep track of what your opponent is doing on the map and how they are doing technology-wise. So you need to scout regularly to have an idea of what you will be dealing with. This is how real-time strategy games tend to work. And let's now contrast this with other approaches of handling game time. The other end of the spectrum would be instead to have it turn-based, like for example Total War Warhammer 2. Uh, here each player have the time to do everything they need or want to do during a turn, which is an unspecified amount of game time. Some games handle turns in sequence, like Total War Warhammer 2, uh, where one player feels that they are done with their turn, they end it, and another player gets their turn to take their turn. This approach of using turns allow for a more strategic and considerate situation about what to do with the resources available to each player. While real-time games needs to have you constantly making recalculations about what the situation is like, the turn-based games allow for each change or each new piece of information that becomes available to a player to be considered until the player feels they are ready to respond in some way. With these two quite different approaches to handling game time, how did we make a decision on this? 
the very first thing we did, of course, was to discuss the topic and see where all the members stood concerning the choices we had before us. After analyzing it for a while, we came to the conclusion that we could approach the choices by looking at them slightly differently. If we start from a turn-based scenario, a specific turn can be an indeterminate amount of time. But let us start from the vantage point that a turn is one month in game time. Now, how much can happen in a month in the game varies greatly on what type of game you're making, of course, but from here, if the time slices that happen between each turn get smaller, let us say instead of a month, we would have them one day, now we start getting very granular turns in time. If we then, in addition to this, also remove that you do not have to confirm when each turn is over and let the game progress naturally, let us say every one second one turn would pass, now we suddenly have something that is real time again. So this is the approach we took. We decided that we will have turns that pass automatically, that will trigger with some set interval, like one second, and each one of these pass a day in the game passes. This way we have a lot of flexibility for changing our minds in the future. We can easily change between having it real-time or turn-based, or something in between, just by changing the parameters of the amount of time between turns, the speed at which they happen in, and if they should be automatic or not. So here you can see a placeholder UI that we currently have in place to test our functionality when it comes to the passage of game time and how it can affect different time-related aspects. In the top left here we can see some debug information that displays what we call time steps. So each time a time step happens, a day passes in the game. So all objects in the game that are somehow affected by time passing will then be affected by this. So things like troop movement to different destinations or having research teams working on their scientific projects can all get progress done once a time step happens. So if we are to display this, we have a research screen here where we can start researching and clicking on this plasma cannon, we can see that progress is being done down here and eventually it gets completed and we are allowed to start researching other things. And now we can do that as well and we can see that how the progress goes there. So each time a time step happens, we get informed about it and the UI updates to display for the user what is happening. And this could easily be changed at any point later on if we wanted to, to have it so that it's either controlled manually by having each player end their turns with a confirming of end turn, or we can adjust the frequency at which these time steps happen, or just have the, the span of each turn happening be different and be more or less granular depending on what we wanted. So. All of these steps allows us to be very flexible about changing our mind later on if we feel that we want to have something that's leaning more towards real-time or something that's leaning more towards turn-based. Anyway, I hope this insight into our decision-making was interesting. Until next time, keep on learning, take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.